Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Uh, today we will continue talking about algebra problems. Um, today's lecture is about progressions, arithmetic and geometric progressions. So I have three problems which we are going to solve. Now this is part of the course called Mass Plus and Problems presented on Unizor.com. There is a prerequisite course called Mass for Teens. Now, Mass for Teens is basically a theoretical material with some problems, but more or less classical problems, typical for high school. Now, these problems are not exactly typical, and that's basically why I have decided to separate these non-typical problems into a separate cor course called Mass Plus and Problems, which follows the Mass uh, for Teens. Uh, on the same website you might find uh, some other interesting courses like Physics for Teens or Relativity for All, Special Theory of Relativity. Um, every lecture on the website on unisor.com is supplemented with the text, notes, whatever you call it. It's basically like a textbook, well, piece of the textbook, which is exactly the same material which I present on the lecture itself. So it's very uh, convenient basically to watch the lecture and then you can read on the same page basically the uh, the theoretical material whatever I was just talking about um, uh, on, the, on the whiteboard it's presented as a text and it's very um, it's very educational actually to do both um, you you can start from the text and then watch the lecture or the other way around now, these are, are, are problems, and what's very important is to try to solve all these problems yourself. So, you can actually read the problem uh, from, the, from the text part of the website. Do not read the solution, because sometimes I present the solution. So, do not read the solution. Try to do it yourself. Even if you do not uh, succeed, it's still very useful to think about the problem is its thinking process which is actually the best benefit which you can take from this course. The more you think, the better you will be off. Alright, so problems. Problem number one, which uh, sounds like this. We have uh, an equation Okay, so this is x cubed plus 7x squared minus 21x minus 27 equals to 0. I would like to solve it. However, now this is obviously <coughs> the third degree, so we don't have any kind of a formula. Well, there is a formula for third degree. It's called Cardano formula. He actually derived it for uh, solutions, roots of this uh, particular um, a third uh, degree equation. But we don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a very bulky formula, that's not interesting. However, there is one additional condition which will allow you to solve this problem. The roots of this equation, the solutions of this equation, x1, x2, and x3, form a geometric progression. Now, that additional condition will allow to solve this um, third degree equation relatively easily. Now, but to do it, I have to basically return back to the previous, the prerequisite course, Mass for Teens, where I presented something which is called Fundamental Theorem of Algebra. It's a very <laughs> loud kind of a name, Fundamental Theorem of Algebra. Well, it was called this way at the time when solving equations, polynomial equations, was the most important part of algebra. That's how algebra started, from basically solving polynomial equations. Um, so that's why it's called fundamental. But basically, I explain this theorem 
without the proof, because the proof is really kind of beyond the scope of these uh, courses. So this fundamental theorem of algebra um, says that any equation of any degree, actually, has at least uh, well, one uh, complex, generally speaking, complex uh, solution. Well, it's kind of an interesting thing, and it's not obvious thing, but this is really a very kind of complicated kind of theorem, that any polynomial equation has a solution in the field of complex numbers which basically includes real numbers and maybe imaginary as well. Now, okay, fine, that, that, that's very interesting. And what follows from this corollary, um, and that has been proven actually in the mass 14th, the prerequisite course, which, which I presented before. Now, um, what follows from this that if a x equals a, is a solution to a polynomial equation of nth degree. This means x to the power of n, x to the power of f n minus 1, etc., with certain coefficients, some of them. Then this polynomial equation, polynomial of nth degree, can be pre represented as x minus a times polynomial of the n minus n minus first uh, degree. And again, if x is equal to zero, then you see it's kind of very obvious because if this is equal to zero, then you can actually have an x is equal to a. Obviously, that's the root of this equation. But then it, uh, it, it actually leaves the polynomial of the lesser degree again as maybe having um, the solutions if, you, if, if, if that one is equal to zero. But fundamental theorem of uh, algebra tells that this is also has some solution. Let's call it, well, let's call this one as a, a zero, and this would be a1. So this polynomial equation, the polynomial also has a solution if you uh, equate it to zero, which means it can be represented as this of x, etc. So p of uh, n minus 2 degree also has this type of uh, representation because it has also a solution according to the fundamental theorem of algebra. So it will be, uh, let's say, A2. So as a result, my original uh, polynomial of the nth uh, degree can be represented as x minus A0, x minus A1, etc., x minus An. An or A minus 1. Uh, yeah, I guess it's a, a. Okay, so basically what it actually means that any polynomial can be represented as a product of x minus, um, no, that's probably n minus 1, because I will have x to the power of n. Okay. So what it means that any polynomial can be represented as product of x minus first solution times x minus the second solution, etc. Now, the first coefficient at x to the power of n in this case is 1. Now, if it's not equal to 1, we can always divide it by this coefficient. So all the coefficients will be different, but uh, uh, at the x to the power of n, it will be uh, coefficient 1. Now, if it's not, then you just multiply this, let's say, by, 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 by something like a. You can multiply it by a, and that would give you any kind of a coefficient 
um, at x to the power of n if you multiply this. Okay, so this is a fundamental theorem of algebra and the consequence from it that any uh, polynomial can be represented as a product of x minus its roots. Okay, I will use this for solving this problem. So I know that there are three different um, numbers which represent three different solutions to the polynomial uh, equation of the third degree. Okay, so let's call it A, B, and C. A, B, and C. Now, it means that this polynomial is of the third degree, actually, of x. So this polynomial of the third degree of x can be represented as x minus A, x minus B, x minus C. Okay? equals to, well, if you will multiply all these, what will be, well, let's first multiply the first two, x minus ax minus bx plus ab times x minus c equals to x cubed minus ax squared minus bx squared plus abx minus cx squared plus acx plus bcx minus abc equals x cube minus a, b, and c all with minus. So it will be a plus b plus cx squared plus a, B, A, C, and B, C. A, B, B, C. I'll put C, A, so it's a cyclical, doesn't matter. X. And the free member would be only one. Minus A, B, C. Okay. So if A, B, and C are roots, of this equation, then it can be represented as this. Which means what? Which means that a plus b plus c is equal to minus 7, right? This is minus, this is plus, so that's why it's minus 7. Now, a b plus b c plus c a is equal to minus 21. That's plus, that's minus, so it's minus here. And um, A times B times C, this one, is equal to 27. 27. Right? And A, B, and C are geometric progression, which means what? Well, that means... That means that B is equal to A times R, and C is equal to A times R squared, where R is the common ratio. That's what geometric progression is. Next one, which means B, is R times greater than A. Well, greater factor R. And then the next one is another factor of R. What does it mean? It means it's a very big help to solve these three, pro 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 th th three equations with three unknowns. We'll take the third one. So A times B, which is AR, times C, which is AR squared, is equal to 27. A to the third degree, r to the third degree, so it's a r cubed is equal to 27, which means a r is equal to 3. Okay? 
great. Now, now what, what do we do next? R, A, R is actually B. So we already found one solution. Now, let's use it for solving this thing. So B is 3, we know that. So A plus B is equal to minus 7. This is 3 goes to the left, so it's minus 10. Okay? Uh, sorry, A plus C. Now, A times C from the third equation is 27 divided by 3, which is 9. Right? Well, now everything is simple. What you can do is basically find C is equal to minus 10 minus A. Substitute to this one, you will have A times C, which would be minus 10A minus 9A uh, square. Sorry. Uh, times A times C minus 10A minus c is equal minus a this is a not 9 a so times a minus a square is equal to 9 and this is just a quadratic equation for a so a square plus 10a minus plus 9 is equal to 0. Uh, a, 1, 2 is equal to 5, no, minus 5, plus minus square root of 25 minus 9. Now this is 4, so it's minus 5 plus minus 4 so it's either a is equal to minus 1 or a is equal to minus 9 okay now uh, well if it's minus 1 then the next one is b was equal to 3 so r is equal to minus 3, right? To get b is equal to 3 from minus 1, we need ratio minus 3. So it's minus 1 for a uh, times minus 3. It's 3 for b times minus 3 minus 9 for c. OK? Now, if I will use a is equal to minus 9, then I will have, then I will have minus 9 for a. Now, r, a, a r is supposed to be 3, which means that r is supposed to be minus 1 third in this case. So it would be minus 9, then times 1, minus 1 third, it's 3, times 1 third, minus 1. So it's exactly the same three values as here. So that's a solutions. These are three solutions. Well, that's it. That's the first problem. Now, the second one will be kind of analogous. But we will do it with arithmetic progression. So, again, uh, third degree equation but the roots are representing, roots are uh, form 
an arithmetic progression. Well, arithmetic progression means that first root is a, second root is a plus d, and the third root would be a plus 2d. These are members of geometric progression with the first uh, member a and the common difference d. And they are supposed to be roots of this thing, which means, again, back to the same kind of solution, that the sum of these should be equal to um, minus the coefficient at the x square, same as in the previous problem. So it's a plus a plus d plus a plus 2d is supposed to be equal to 15. Now their product is supposed to be 120. So a times a plus d times a plus 2d equal to 120. Okay. Now, uh, sorry, minus 120. Yeah, it was an opposite sign. Here opposite from minus 15 is 15, and here opposite is 1, minus 120. So from the first equation, what do we have? a, a, and a, that's 3a and 3d. So it's a, 3a and 3d is 15, which means that a plus d is equal to 5. Okay, that's good. Now, um, from this, what we can do actually is um, let's just use this. So a, so a plus d is 5. So that's basically the second solution we have already found. What's, uh, what, what's kind of a, a little trick maybe. Instead of a, we can put, this is 5 minus d, right? So it's 5 minus d. That would be just easier times 5, and a plus 2d would be 5 plus d equals to minus 120. Now, why did I do it? Because you see 5 minus d, 5 plus d, that's very easy to multiply. So 5 uh, cancels with this one, so I will have 25 minus d squared equals to 120 divided by 5, it's 24, minus 24 which means d squared is equal to 49, which means d is equal to plus minus 7. So, we have the second member, and we have two different values for d. So this one would be subtracting d, so it's 5 minus 7, and this one would be then 5, the next one would be 5 plus 7. Another is if I'm using minus 7. So 5 minus minus 7 would be 5 plus 7. 5. And 5 plus 7 would be, considering it's minus, would be 5 minus 7. So these are basically exactly the same numbers. So it's minus 2, 5, and 12. These are solutions. So again, we are using the sum and the product of the roots in, and the fact that this is arithmetic progression. Okay, that's it. And the third problem is... You have two different uh, progressions. One is arithmetic, Another is geometric. Three first members. Arithmetic is a, a plus d, a plus 2d. Geometric progression is first member b, next one would be b times r, where r is a ratio, and the next would be b times r, r squared. So what's known about this? We have to determine these progressions, these three numbers. Now, What's known is that the first members are the same, which means A is equal to B. That's easier already. Now, it's also known that the sum of three members is equal to sum of these three members. So, A plus A plus D, so it's 3A plus D, is equal to sum of these. B, uh, well, instead of B, 
uh, well, I, let, let me start with br plus br square, but I have already determined, well, it's given that a is equal to b, so I can put a times ar times ar square. And the third condition is that the sum of two members, first two members, is greater than the sum of these two members by triple first member. So a plus, uh, so it's 2a plus d, is greater than sum of these, which is uh, b and br, so I will put a plus ar now, by triple a, by triple, so that's, so this is greater than this by triple. Um, so now what I have, I have this, and I have this. Now, what's necessary to determine? Well, it's not every member of every progression. What's necessary to determine in this particular problem is only R. And you will see why I, 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 I'm talking about only R to be determined. But anyway, we do have two uh, equations, this and this, uh, and somehow we have to determine uh, what's... Ex but, but there are three unknown, A, D, and R. So how can we do it? All right, well, let's just simplify it as much as possible. Uh, okay, now this is the first one can be simplified you see this 3a this is 1a so we will have 2a plus 3d that's what remaining here is equal to a r plus a r squared right so this a and out of this 3a i have 2a everything else i retain now this one uh, also a and 2a, so that would be 1a plus d equals to a r. Oh no, there is a 3a as well. So that's uh, minus 1, that's 2a. a r plus 3 minus, so that's 2a, right? 3a, 4a minus 2a. So that's what we have. And we will substitute this to this. And what will we will have? 2a plus d, which is a r plus 2a equals a r plus a r square. So, and what happens, a can be cancelled. And as a result, I will have an equation um, r square. Am I right? I think I made a mistake somewhere. Okay, 2a plus d. a plus d is equal to d plus 3d d plus hmm. why am I so 2a plus 3d is equal to this. Yeah, that's correct. d is equal to 2a plus ar. That's also correct. Okay. Now, if I will substitute, I will have 2a plus 3d. Oh, that's, that's where I'm wrong. It's 3d. Uh, 
3D with will be 3AR plus 6A. Now it's correct. It's 3D, so it's triple this. It's 3IR and 6AD. Okay. A cancels out. What do I have? R square. Now R is minus 2. And 6 plus uh, 2 is 2, so it goes to this, minus 8 equals to 0. And the roots of this are um, 2 plus minus square root of 4 uh, uh, 4 plus 8 no, it's supposed to be 4 and 2. So it's 1 divided by 2. 1 plus minus 1 plus 1 to 2. So it's supposed to be what? 4 and 2. 4 and minus 2. Yes, 4 and minus 2. Product is minus 8, sum is 2. Yes, 4 and minus 2. So we have two different values for R. 4 and minus 2. Both actually fit the bill. Now, why cannot we determine the rest of the numbers for one simple reason. You see, A is cancelling out, which means no matter which A we start from as a first um, number in the geometric or uh, arithmetic uh, progression, we will have the same relationship between the, uh, uh, between the members. So the first three members sum of first three members will be equal to sum of these three members. Well, the first member is equal, it's, okay, it's given, and the difference between sum of the first two will be the same, basically. So, that's why, uh, since it's all proportional, that's why we cannot determine any number, whatever we take as the first one, would fit, basically, the bill. We can find, uh, we, we, we just take any A, Let's say we take A is equal to, let's say, 3. Then R we know, let's say, it's for instance, it's 4, which means that um, times 4 plus 2 times 3 would be my difference, which is what? 12 and uh, 6, 18. And then, so from 3 we will have to 18, uh, that would be uh, 21, and then 18... Uh, 39. So that would be a sequence of arithmetic sequence and correspondingly geometric it will be also uh, the same. But n n uh, no matter which A I choose as the beginning for both arithmetic and geometric sequence, I will still have all my three conditions satisfied. But what, I what R is uh, defined, that's definite. It's either 4 or minus 2. In both cases, we will have the uh, arithmetic and geometric progression with the proper conditions satisfied. Okay, that's it. I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture, the text, which is basically parallel to the lecture. And again, what, uh, what I'm very much encouraging you to do, read, this, uh, read the, uh, the problem, do not read the solution. Uh, try to solve the problem again yourself on a piece of paper, the same I, as I did um, with, a, with a whiteboard, and uh, just complete solution, very accurately written, without any kind of uh, problems. One by one, you will have all these equations with the results. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck.